Hi everyone and welcome to the video on choice of birthplace. So today with me I have Aaron Gardner who is my teammate on team two. So we have two thirds of team two here today <laughs> to walk you through choice of birthplace with the midwives of Mississauga. Hi everybody. We thought we would start uh, the session talking about what uh, choice of birthplace means to midwives in general and, and specifically here in Mississauga. So we, um, in Mississauga, the choice you have for birthplace is home or hospital. Unfortunately, we don't have a birth center here in Mississauga, though hopefully one day. Um, and the Toronto Birth Center is just too far away for us to get to safely. And we're not, uh, we're not excited about catching babies on the side of the Gardner Expressway. So, <laughs> so we want to stay here in Mississauga, which is home for us. Um, and well, I think we were going to talk a bit about just what it means in midwifery care in general and what the tenets of midwifery care are. Yeah, so choice of birthplace is one of the three main tenets of midwifery care, the other one being informed choice and continuity of care. And it really is one of my absolute favorite tenants of midwifery care because I think it's, it's a big point of privilege that we have in this type of care that we get to support our clients as they learn about their pregnancy and learn about you know, their health and their strength and support them to have their baby where they feel the safest and where it is clinically appropriate for them. Absolutely. I think um, that's one of the things we always talk to everybody about is that there's a right place for everyone to have their birth. And sometimes it takes a while for you to figure it out. So this session is one way we're going to let you explore an option maybe you haven't thought about yet. Um, and just to learn a bit more about what these options are, because at the end of the day, the thing that's most important is that you're having your baby somewhere where you feel safe and secure, because that's where your labor is going to progress the best. So we want that for everybody um, at the end of the day. And Mariah started leading into um, something that's important actually is talking about um, who is appropriate for a home birth, who would be eligible to have a home birth. So it is something that we, it's, it's a constant conversation that evolves throughout your care with midwives. There's not one single point where we say, okay, yes, you're appropriate or no, you're not appropriate. It, it evolves as your pregnancy evolves and as you learn and as your feelings with your partner and your family and everything that surrounds you kind of comes together to the point where you have your baby. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there are... Um, some situations, uh, for the most part, people in midwifery care to begin with are people who are enjoying low risk normal pregnancies. So most of those people are going to be appropriate for midwifery care. And there are some specific, or, or appropriate for a home birth rather, um, but the, uh, there are some specific things that we would not recommend um, for people who are delivering at home. And those are situations where um, we might anticipate uh, needing a higher level of support for either mom or baby in labor or at birth. Because if we need a little bit more support, we want to be um, in a hospital where we have um, access to those things. Yeah, absolutely. And that can, and that can be apparent, um, you know, in your pregnancy. It can be apparent in your labor. It, you know, it, it really depends. And the, one of the nice things about home birth is that it's adaptable. You're not stuck in one place because you've decided at the beginning of your labor to be in that place. That's right. Yeah. At the end of the day, we can transfer um, out of home really for uh, at, at the parent's choice. Uh, if they just decide, you know what, this was this was what I wanted and was planning for. But now that I'm here, I think I'd rather go in. We can go in. Um, and uh, part of that is because we are so we are integrated into the healthcare system here. So in those kinds of situations where we have to go in or, or change our plan at any point, then we um, we just all go together. So you don't lose your midwives. Um, we're still present for your birth and everything. Um, it's just a it's just a change of the room. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, there are lots of things that home birth does protect for you in labor. Um, in the descriptions of this video linked below, we have some slides from the Association of Midwives that talks about a lot of the benefits to having a home birth, as well as some of the, the, like the incidences where you would leave and how often that actually happens. We're going to get into that a little bit more when we go over the, um, the equipment. Mm -hmm. um, but next, what was next up on our docket, Erin? 
Uh, well, as a matter of fact, as it turns out, Mariah's planning a home birth right now, guys. She is full term and we're at home in <laughs> So she's going to give us a tour of how she set up her birth. So Aaron and I decided to actually set up equipment for you, which we can do because we're doing this out of my home. Normally when we do our choice of birthplace nights in the clinic, we bring out our equipment to show you, but it's actually nice to see it in a space. Mm -hmm. And one of the other nice things about setting up my equipment in my space is that I live in a small condo and this is often something that we see as a barrier to people who might really love or benefit or go for a home birth, but they're a little bit freaked out because they think they can't do it if they have a small space. Mm -hmm. So I am here to show you that it is possible and actually quite comfortable. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I'm going to flip my camera around here. Give me one second. All right, everybody, welcome to my home birth. So one of the safety things that we're going to start off with is the fact that my entranceway is nice and clear. All right, that makes it easy for my midwife to come in. It makes it easy for any EMS who, if they did were needed to come in, they could access the area easily. We have access to a nice clean bathroom in there, which I will not show you, but is there and available for the midwives. One thing then, I would say too, Mariah's paged her midwives already, so her door is unlocked and her outside oh yes. light is on. That is true. And because I live in a condo, I have informed them about the parking situation. Yes. And the buzzer And where the visitor parking is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then we come in here and I have decided to have my baby in my living room. Okay. So you can really have your baby wherever you want in your house. Yep. I like my living room because it's the most open place in my little apartment. So what I've done to prepare myself is I have draped the place where I've decided to have my baby in a sheet and underneath that sheet there is a shower curtain to keep my couch nice and cream colored. Um, as well, if you use your imagination, I have my birth pool in the center here that is actually about the size of a birth pool so you can 100% fit it in a small condo. All right, so welcome to my home birth. My midwife has been very speedy and got here and actually set up all of her equipment on the surface area that I had cleaned off prior to her arrival. And it is near an outlet, which is just right there. All right, so there's lots of things actually in a, oh, and over here I have my garbage yeah. cans here my garbage bags this one's for garbage this one's for linens keeps it nice and separate and organized linens on the left that's a midwifery trick. linens on the left <laughs> so there's actually tons of things in this tiny little space here that you can use for labor support like i said i've got my labor pool right here i can hop in and out it out of it as i want to i have my pad here in the area where i want to have my baby i can lean on the back of this couch i can lie down here i have my birth stool right here that i can use i can put on some music or a show if i want i can dance around mm -hmm. i can walk up and down the hallway i could go back into that bathroom and go into the bath or the shower as i wanted to and it's really easy just to switch in between any and all of these things as i need them yeah, the kitchen's right there for a snack yes yes it is snacks are very important snacks are very important <laughs> Um, and those uh, that lovely pad that Mariah has on her couch, your midwives, if you plan a home birth, will give you um, some supplies, uh, those kind of disposable supplies. So we'll, we would talk to you about um, the things to have around, but in general, uh, the disposable things like that, we would provide for you so you don't need to find them anywhere. Yes, we do. If you are planning a home birth, we do actually give you a home birth kit, um, which just allows for temperature control for some of the things that we would like to have uh, at your home birth, things like there's a specific drug for management of postpartum bleeding that we like you to keep in your fridge. And it's also nice if your IV fluid is room temperature if you need it and not cold out of your midwife's trunk. Er, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Less of a problem now we're heading into the summer, but still yes, soon. yes. Yeah. But those, those January home births, it's, yeah. it is quite nice to have room temperature fluid. Yeah, if we need it. <laughs> so we said, yeah. Yeah. So I noticed, uh, Mariah, you've got your equipment all set up there. Why don't we walk folks through some of the equipment we bring 
Um, Absolutely. In general, we say we bring the same equipment as they have at a um, level one hospital. So yeah. the things we don't have at home are things are actually people more than equipment. So we don't <laughs> bring uh, an anesthesiologist with us. We don't bring a pediatrician with us. We don't bring an obstetrician with us. But we have all the same equipment otherwise that we would need to manage an emergency for mom or for baby. Mariah will show you a bit more. And, and, you know, keep in mind for the majority of people in labor, you don't have all of those people when you have midwifery care, right? We pull them into your story if we need them, but for the most part, it's you and your midwives. So it doesn't really change much. Anyway, so let's go through the equipment. Okay. So right here, I have my sterilized birth equipment. So I have scissors, I have umbilical cord clamps. Um, I have suture, like suture instruments that I can use in there. In here, and I'm very, I'm very organized and very proud of myself, I have other equipment that I need for births. So if I open it up, <laughs> I have little umbilical guys for your baby. I have sponges. Mm -hmm. I have amni hooks if i need to break your water that's this guy right here all in there and ready to use i have gloves i have everything i need to manage a birth right here this is the equipment that i use to listen to your baby in a oh sorry this one in a normal um in a normal labor so we have our electronic doppler that we use in the clinic and then I actually have a fetoscope that I carry with me as well, just for something non-technological if someone requires it or wants it. Prefers, yeah. Prefers, yes. Um, I have stuff to monitor um, your vitals. I have gloves. In here I have things to manage um, your postpartum needs. So I have my little kits of things to manage bleeding. I have... Tylenol, I have more gloves. Um, I have things to empty your bladder if I need to, all in here. And then in this guy, I have things to do any suturing. If you do have any tears, uh, your midwife can still do the suturing at home as long as it's a first or second degree tear, and most of them are. So I have uh, things to keep you numb. I have a lamp. I have all the suture material in there. Moving on to over here, this is my stuff that I have to draw your blood. If anything needs to happen where I draw your blood. Oh, and I'm knocking over my container to safely dispose of any sharps. Um, and here I have everything that I need to run an IV. So we do this if you have too much bleeding, if we think you're dehydrated, or if you are GBS positive and opting for antibiotics in your home. We can also bring all of that stuff to you with this equipment right here. So that's some birth equipment there. And then this is some newborn equipment. Oh, before I go on to the baby, this is a little oxygen station for the birthing parent, should we need it. Okay, and then over here I have my baby station. So I have set up my little warmer, I have my little heating pad and I put my baby blankets over top. Okay, I have things to monitor the baby's vitals. So I have something to measure their oxygen saturation. I can listen to their heart and their lungs. I can check their red reflexes in their eyes. I can measure their height and length. This is my scale, which I can use to weigh your baby. Okay, and I have all this stuff on a nice, clean, flat, hard surface in case we do need to do any kind of resuscitation for your baby, which is the equipment that I have here. So I have two types of um, bag and masks to provide newborn resuscitation. I have oxygen, I have suction, okay? And if you think about that newborn resuscitation table that you see in hospitals or for a lot of people on TV that the baby goes over to if they <laughs> need resuscitation, that's really what it is. It's the warmer, the oxygen and the suction all together in one station. So we've just kind of created that in your home. I do also have things to manage emergencies for babies. So I have, and very organized, again, super proud of myself, things to <laughs> intubate a baby if I need. And I also have medications to give to a baby in a more extensive resuscitation if that is required. Yeah. 
And midwives are, uh, we are required by our college to recertify every year in neonatal resuscitation. So this is something that we um, drill all the time. We have it set up in our clinic. We have a table set up in the back. And if we have a few of us hanging out together with a few minutes to spare, we will run a drill because this is something we take very seriously um, and, uh, and want to always have it right at our fingertips if we need to do anything. Yeah. So at every single every single home birth that I go to, I set up very similarly to this. So as you can see, the equipment fits in a really small space. It's nice and organized and compact and easily accessible to your care provider. And it doesn't have to be one, one space like that either, I guess. I, that's, that's total of it, but it, most of it can be spread out in different spots as well. Very true. Like if you had a smaller table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's just the table I got, so we're working with what I got. <laughs> Absolutely. And the uh, one other thing that we will bring um, is uh, a tank of nitrous oxide from mom. Oh, yes. So we can bring laughing gas, which is one of the, one of the things we can offer at home for pain relief. Yeah, I do not currently have that because I am not one of the on-call midwives. She's not on-call. She's not allowed to have it. <laughs> yeah. It's there for the people who actually need it right now. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Very good. Um, so we talked about access and equipment and things around Mariah's house, ways she's thought of using her space. Um, and then the next thing that we thought we would talk about are um, emergency scenarios and what happens if we need to transfer from home to a hospital. Mm -hmm. So the number one reason for actually leaving a home birth is non-emergent. It's actually typically for pain relief. Yeah. I mean, having a home birth does reduce your chances of wanting an epidural, but for some people, they reach the limit of their pain tolerance and then they need one, they want one. Cool. We go to the hospital and we get one. Yeah. Or it not might in be, a, not in an ambulance. That's an everybody. Not in an ambulance. Cars. No, we go in a car. <laughs> yeah. We just we just we just pack up and go. Yeah. Yeah. Um or it might be there are certain clinical situations where it might be recommended to you by your midwife, um, and then it would come into a discussion on the change of birthplace, if that was the case. Yeah. So some common ones might be um, if uh, you developed a fever in labor, um, and if the baby's heart rate sounded at all abnormal to us with the Doppler, so if it was extra high, or if we were hearing um, drops in the baby's heartbeat, things like that, we would likely recommend going in um, if there was, if your water broke or we broke your water and there was meconium in the fluid um, and you weren't real close to having your baby, uh, then, uh, then we would recommend going into the hospital at that point as well. Um, these things are all um, quite, like they, they happen when they happen. Um, there's mm -hmm. something we're very familiar with dealing with um, and it would be, um, we're planning to go into the hospital because it is the uh, most conservative path. So usually at home, we, um, we practice, the reason home birth stays safe is because we, um, we don't wait for a red warning sign to go in. We wait, we kind of go when it starts to be like a yellow light. Hey, yeah. Yellow. Yeah. And, and that allows for, for time for conversation mm -hmm. with you as well. Right. So that your midwife isn't waiting for an emergency to be like, no, we got to go now. Mm -hmm. They're always in constant communication with you being like, these, are the things I'm seeing, it might possibly take this path. This is kind mm -hmm. of the, the increased like access to whatever mm -hmm. we want for that situation and why we want it. And we make that decision together. Yeah, sort of this is, this is what we're seeing. This is why we think we should go in. This is what, um, you know, the, the risks or benefits of staying at home versus the risks of the benefits of going in. Um, and we, it's, still, it's still very important to us that you are the one making the decisions for your care. Mm -hmm. um, did you have anything else you wanted to say about transfer or any other emergencies or? Oh, we can talk about actual emergent transfer and what that looks like. Sure. Like with EMS. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, cause you know, like we just went over most of the times we're getting in our car and we're going, but there are times when we do call EMS and that's either because there is an actual emergency happening or because you've just had a baby. And even though the reason we're going in might not be emergent, you might we're not, not going to pack you into your car half an hour after you've had a baby. Yeah. 
and transport that way. So sometimes we, we do call EMS in the postpartum for non-emergent things, things like your placenta just is not coming out on, yeah. and your bleeding is stable and all of our tricks aren't working. And we just, we just, there's, it comes a certain time where we do need to consult with an obstetrician, even though it's non-emergent. Yeah. Right. That's things like that. So, yeah. but, but like, like we said, there are, there, you know, there, there is a certain amount of unpredictability to birth mm -hmm. and there are going to be times where you do have true blue emergencies. But one of the wonderful things about working in the area where we work is that we have great relationships with the other care providers in the community and we are well integrated into the healthcare system. Yeah. So if we do need to call EMS, right, we, uh, we have quick response times. We get to the hospital quickly and we're able to get you into whatever type of care is the most appropriate for your situation quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's a really good point. I think too, like our hospitals are very central. Um, they're not terribly far away. It's always going to the nearest hospital in an emergency situation. Um, the hospital knows we're coming as soon as we know we're coming. So they, if there's anything they need to get ready on their end, they are starting to do that as we're starting to do it on the way as well. Um, and uh, even though it can, can be a high adrenaline situation, it's, uh, it's definitely something where it feels like a team approach and you've just got more people who we've brought onto your team to make sure that you and your baby get the care that you need. And it is also important to remember that even during transport, you are still receiving emergency care. Absolutely. Have, yeah. It's not just a pause until you arrive where we're going. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Like we have, we have a, like all the same drugs here to manage postpartum bleeding. If that's the concern, mm -hmm. we have things to give you an IV if we yeah. need to, for that kind of thing. We're, we are mm -hmm. addressing emergencies as they happen, not just waiting to get to the hospital to address Absolutely. anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent point. Um, I don't think I had anything else to say about transfer. I think we've got. Uh, no, just if, um, if there is a concern for the baby, we typically call two ambulances. If it's only for mom and the baby's fine, then we typically call one and the baby goes in the car with the partner, yeah. um, in the car seat and meets you there. Yeah. Good one. Convoy. Mm -hmm. Baby's yeah. third trip. <laughs> but you know what? Most of the time. Right. For people who are good candidates for home birth, you just have a lovely, chill birth. Yeah. I think Mariah had spoken earlier about we're going to link below the um, documents from the AOM. And I think one of the cool things about having a home birth in Ontario is that midwifery has been regulated for more than 25 years here. And so we have have 25 years of home birth data to pull from to give you mm -hmm. really rich statistics about what happens um, in terms of risks. So there's a great study that was done by McMaster, I think not even like two years ago, roughly, um, where they're comparing um, home birth with midwives to hospital birth with midwives, which are as close to apples to apples comparison for a research study as you can possibly get. Uh, mm -hmm. And in general, the, all the evidence points to the fact that um, outcomes at home are the same as at hospital for babies and slightly improved for mums. So yeah. lower rates of intervention, lower rates of perineal trauma, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, um, the other thing is because of that, uh, that like thousands and thousands of home births that have happened in, in Ontario, um, there is a lot of support from the obstetrical community in general. And the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada recognizes that as well. They have a statement on choice of birthplace and it's that home birth is, or out of hospital birth, is a, an appropriate choice for low risk normal pregnancies. <laughs> It, it really is. It really is lovely. And like, even if you just don't have to get into a car in labor, that's lovely. Yeah. Sorry. My, uh, my daughter's just calling for um, bedtime support here. Just give me one second. Let me just pause. We'll be right. right we're going to pause and we'll come back. Okay. We're back. My daughter's Hello. back in bed. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> good news. She just need a drink of water. <laughs> Um, so we were kind of talking about, uh, uh, where were we at? We're talking, well, why people might choose home births, the safety of home births and the support in the community, um, the obstetrical yeah. community in general. Um, what's your favorite thing about home birth, Mariah? 
I love the atmosphere. I find that people in their own spaces get into a really good rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because you're used to your space. You know what you can use. You're not focusing on this highlighted bed in the center of the room and the fetal monitors. You can really focus on the job that your body is doing and that you yeah. need to get done. And, and you're, in, you're in a place where you can, I find people are more able to trust in their bodies that yeah. they're able to do it. I think too, sometimes it's, you've been pregnant for a while by that point and you've been thinking about your birth. And sometimes it's hard to visualize if you haven't had a baby before in the hospital, sort of what that is. It's sort of just like labor something that happens here. Whereas if you're planning a home birth, it's um, you, every time you're in your tub, you're like, maybe, maybe I could labor in here for a while. This might be a nice place to sit while I have, while I have contractions, you know, or if uh, you have just ultimate control over your thermometer. So if you're cold, we turn up the heat. And if you're hot, we open a window. Um, mm -hmm. I really love being able to integrate some of the outdoors actually in home births. If the weather is appropriate, um, just having fresh air. Uh, if people have nice outdoor spaces, like you can go on a patio for some contractions, you can be in a backyard for some contractions. Um, and they can be really calming sort of um, environments, right? Because you're all, you're just ultimately in charge. It's, it's your smells and your food and all your familiar stuff. I also love that it gives you, I, and this is going to sound interesting, but it gives you almost a little bit of privacy from your midwife sure, in some sure. aspects, yeah. because I find that when I'm in a hospital room, right, oftentimes I'm just kind of hanging right out there. in that <laughs> one little room, just right with you yeah. all the time, which, you know, if someone needs labor support, like hands-on constant support, yeah. then yeah, I'm going to be doing that no matter where they are. But for someone in their own home, I find that you can go off into a little room and have a moment with your partner. And I'm always within earshot. I'm coming in and I'm listening to your baby every 15 minutes and making sure that everything is safe and healthy and going, but you can have little, little moments mm -hmm. of your own time. In yeah, labor, no, which I really cool. like. Yeah, it's totally lovely. Yeah. And then I'd love to get back to talking about what it looks like after the baby's born and Mariah's beautiful ivory couch. <laughs> but I've decided to have my baby about, on. People are very worried about home birth being messy. Um, very worried. It's one of the number one what? things people bring up to us. It's not. Yeah, it's not messy. It's a spoiler alert. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I've like I I know this is something that I've been planning right with my you know, clearly, you know, I'm clearly pregnant. Um, so I've, I've set up my space. I have my shower curtain underneath my, um, uh, my sheet here. So that on, and then you've got plastic on top and then you got the eh, older sheets. You don't worry about as much on top. Yeah. So I have my baby here, right there. And then while I'm getting up to go to the bathroom, what the midwives are going to do is they're going to strip the bed. Yep. Take off the sheet, yep. put on the, the clean like cover so that it's nice. And then after I'm done in the bathroom, I just slip into a nice clean bed yep. and I snuggle my baby and I get to have breakfast and it's lovely. Exactly. Yeah. We are diligent with the um, green pads and blue pads you see there. We really, we really work hard to protect your uh, mattresses and rugs and things like that as well. Um, mm -hmm. There is a bag of linens, so there will be some uh, baby blankets that have um, baby goop on them. And, and, that, uh, and that top set of sheets. Yeah, exactly. That top set of, set of sheets might have some stuff on it, but they, um, it's all very washable. Um, this is not, um, this is not going to look like a scene from Dexter. It's not going to be scary. Um, and, uh, when we leave your home, we leave you with those two garbage bags. That's the, that and a new That's baby, the only evidence that you had a baby. So yeah. you have the bag of linens and we'll talk to you about how best to wash those linens in your to, to deal with any stains. We will, um, the garbage bag, which, uh, needs to go out on the next garbage day, but not early in case the raccoons get the cans. Um, we are going to be leaving you with your placenta in a plastic mm -hmm. bag, which again can go, and I'm pretty sure in Mississauga it can go in the green bin if you have a green bin and if not just the garbage. Um, and usually we'd say to put that in your freezer so that it gets, um, solid, uh, and again, only goes out the day of collection. Yep. And we, That's and we double bag it and we make oh, yeah. sure it's clean and, and nothing gets anywhere. And then you just, you just throw it away when it's frozen Yeah. or, you know, you do what you're going to do with your placenta. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There are lots of lovely traditions around placentas mm -hmm. in backyards and in special places and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, anything else about postpartum you wanted to say? 
Um, your midwife will do the paperwork to register the birth. So yep. you don't have to worry about that just because you didn't have a baby in the hospital. Yep. Um, and then you need to do the same service Ontario that you would no matter where you have your baby in the first 30 days to get the, like the health card and the, the SIN number and things like that, the birth certificate. Yeah. Usually following the birth, your midwives will be at your home for two to three hours as an, on an average. Um, and a large part of that time, we are sitting somewhere doing paperwork <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and yep. checking on you and your, your family just to, occasionally to make sure everything is normal. Um, helping you feed exactly so exactly yeah um and then uh for we do uh at home this is the same for home births as or and for people who do early discharge so who have a hospital birth but then go home right from the birth um we do all the routine newborn screening tests at home so we'll come back to see your baby usually between 24 and 36 hours approximately Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will be doing screening for congenital heart defects and the routine newborn Ontario screening, um, which you'll learn more about from your midwives as you get closer to term. Um, and the only screening test, oh, we do blood work at the birth if you have a negative blood type. Um, mm -hmm. So we do that and we take a cord blood sample from the baby's umbilical cord after the baby, after the cord's detached from the baby um, to take to the hospital and we would bring you back your Rogam injection if you needed that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Hearing screening is not done routinely for babies who have a home birth at home. Or if you're early discharged. Or if you do early discharge. Um, and right now actually hearing screening is not done for all hospital babies either because of COVID restrictions. Um, so some people who deliver in hospital are still um, having to follow up and do the hearing screening in the community at a later date. Um, but we do send the information to Erin Oak, who does, who coordinates those hearing screenings. Um, and we would make sure you knew what to do and when to do it to make sure baby gets that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else about postpartum care, Mariah? No, it just slides really easily into the home postpartum care that we do for all of our clients. I agree. Yeah. I really think um, that we, uh, it's a privilege to be able to be in people's homes and to um, support them through this uh, experience. No matter where you decide to have your baby, it's a special event. And I think it's a great part of being a midwife to be able to do that. Um, something uh, that I think is great is sometimes even deciding to labor at home and see where things go and sometimes open up a lot of doors you might not have had considered before. So even if you're not positive, you want to have a home birth, um, once you think you're in active labor, you paid your midwife, we'll come assess you at home. Um, and if your um, cervix is dilated enough and your contractions are strong and regular, um, you can either go to the hospital or we can stay at home for a while as well and see how it go. So there's yeah. babies you typically don't fall out. There's often time, I mean, some come real fast, but Sometimes most, most of the time, most of the time uh, we've got time to make these decisions. So if you felt like in the moment, this is something you can consider in the moment as well. And I've absolutely have had clients go either way on that. I've had people labor at home and be like, okay, at six to seven centimeters, I'm going to be ready to go in. And then we went in and it was lovely. And I've also had people who wanted to labor at home a little bit and were not, you know, thinking that home birth was for sure what they were going to do. And then I got there and I assessed them and they looked at me and they were like, Mariah, I just, I don't want to get in the car. Yeah. And then we stayed and had a really nice birth. Yeah. So at, so the end of the day, it, yeah, at the end of the day, it really is about choices and having um, other options for you and your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I have anything else to say. I think I've said all the things. I, I think that's it. This was a little bit of a different format for us, obviously, because we're doing this over Zoom, but also yes. because we usually have clients kind of lead this talk with the questions that they ask. Um, so we hope that we've provided you with information that helps you as you yeah. learn about your pregnancy and your options mm -hmm. and follow up with your midwife about any questions that you have. Exactly. And the, just a reminder that we're going to link to those, um, the, the sort of infographic slides about the safety. Uh, we'll also link to some really great videos um, yeah. about uh, why, uh, that the AOMs made from families who have chosen hospital birth and who have chosen home birth, sort of why they chose what they did, what their experience was like. Um, they're all very short and, and kind of cute little stories and you can get a flavor for why some people might choose this. Um, yeah. So I would, I'd encourage you to watch the videos too and see, see what you think. Awesome.
All right. We look forward to seeing you guys in clinic soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.